Welcome to Face to Facts, our virtual episodes that we love to provide you here with. I am Nick Face. We want to wish you a happy holidays and a merry, merry Christmas. Uh, we have Phil Healy joining us here on his lovely satellite. <laughs> and we have um, Tom. Looks like uh, Chris Kringle has decided to um, no longer appear on our program, and Tom Smith is also here in the house. On today's program, we're going to be doing things a little differently here. We have a couple different segments that we'll do that are Christmas-themed, and hopefully there's a play-along kind of aspect to it with a little game that we'll do. We will go through the grind first. We're talking about the disgraceful Patriots, and then we will talk about um, some Celtics that are upcoming for action. That it begins, uh, is it this evening, Phil? Uh, they play tomorrow night, but the NBA begins tonight. Two games NBA tonight. NBA begins, uh, uh, what is this, December 21st or 2nd? Uh, the 2nd, yeah. Second. I can't so keep like, track of the days. So like anymore. a month and a half uh, ahead of, or behind, I guess. And then we have the NHL, which we heard an announcement of will be kicking off. I think it's January 14th. Um, for their 13th. shortened uh, fifth, 15th, 13th, 13th, um, for their season upcoming. Um, I want to talk about the Patriots because we haven't been with you for a little bit of time. We had a snowstorm that hit us last week and the show that we did pre previously before that, uh, before the Patriots game, they were playing on a Thursday night and they got their absolute asses kicked against the, was it the, no, it wasn't the 49ers. Who was the it? Rams. Thanks, the Rams. Thank you. Um, that was pretty much it for me after that horrible, disgraceful performance they had against uh, the Rams. They lost that game. Then people kept saying, oh, don't worry. There's still a glimmer of hope. Miami, they're going to, you know, if the Patriots win against Miami, they can still have a chance in the playoffs. I want to ask you guys first here, why do you think that we believe that this team actually could have had an outside chance at making the playoffs? Let's hit Phil first. I want to ask you that uh, lovely question first. Why we thought that they why could make... Why did we think that the Patriots might legitimately have a chance? Like, are we talking about a couple weeks ago? A couple weeks ago, yeah, before the Rams uh, game. I'm just gonna yeah, well, no, I think, listen, I think... They had some decent games in there, and like the forty-five to nothing blanking of Chargers wasn't a bad uh, litmus test. And I think at that point they were six and six. Yeah, they were. I mean, and there were a lot of opportunities uh, for them. As my dogs chime in, there were a lot of opportunities for them to kind of to gain ground. I think, like mathematically and like eyeballing, I think it wasn't the worst. I mean, Cam Newton kind of was still where he was, but. The defense seemingly got a little better, and special teams was playing well. And Nick Folk, our folk hero, was MVP. in fact me. He is. I mean, honestly, like he's well, been one of their the best players. This year. Yeah, he's. I he, he hasn't missed much. I actually would love oh. to look at like uh, he those missed, numbers. Um, I but, think two at the earlier beginnings of the season. Oh, well, he's, on, um, he's, he's like thirty-five for thirty-five now, or something. Yeah, like and he's that. Wow. he's like eleven. He's like eleven of eleven from. 50 plus or 40 plus or whatever. Yeah, I, w I was actually like, I'm astonished by like how automatic he's become. Oh, who would have uh, thought? I mean, after yeah. all these years with Kostowski and then Vinatieri, that this guy who kept getting signed, released, signed, yeah. released, finally this year he got that opportunity. And did I give him credit? I give yeah. him credit. I mean, that's got to be tough knowing that you're coming in one door, exiting the other, coming back in the other door again, and then going out the same door, but then coming back again and doing it again. Because I think, yeah, because I also think, like, Shane Graham, they had a, rev they had a revolving door of kickers. Oh, think, it was right? terrible. And Gustowski was out a whole year, and then uh -huh. he came back, and they had, you know, it's a whole whole mess. But, uh, yeah, I think we like, there was a legit, like, okay, you know, a legit shot at the seventh seed. Uh, and I think that wasn't unrealistic, but I think they played themselves out of it. I mean, it's just kind of like they just aren't, they're not all there. So, and, you know, Cam so isn't playing well. I continue on with this question that I had. Phil, are you surprised that this is the outcome of what the Patriots 2020 season is? They will not be going to the playoffs. They're done. No, I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed. But I mean, like, I mean, this definitely was on the table. I mean, it's, even it's like. A nice, 
it's a nice round out for the New England fans in 2020. <laughs> it fits everything well. It sure. just fits everything well. You know, you had the Bruins' big disappointment. You had the Red Sox completely sucking this year. Um, you had the Celtics just they, kind they of fizzled, pulled, they pulled fizzled everybody. Out. You know, they big tease. Um, this was not a tease for the Patriots by any means. And I want to apologize firsthand at me actually having any sort of confidence with this group. I want to flat out say it. I was wrong. How dare I will you be gladly wrong. admit when I am wrong. I actually thought heading into that Thursday night game, the Patriots had a legitimate chance to surprise some people and become a wild card team. Well, that was one of the stupidest statements of the year. I take full credit with that. So we are not experts. We have predictions. We're allowed to be wrong with everything. Uh, I'm sorry I ever believed in Cam Newton. I'm sorry I believed in this team. I should have checked out before the season even began because what we saw in the last two weeks specifically is one of the most disgraceful performances I've ever witnessed as a Patriots fan, even dating back to the 90s and early 2000s when I was uh, 9, 10, 11 years old, something like that. I think the coaching staff has a ton to be blamed for, but I also think that it's 100% fair game to be criticizing Bill Belichick right now for continuing to put out that pathetic has-been every week Cam Newton on the football field. They're, they're going nowhere with Cam Newton. He can't even go on an interview right now and say that Cam Newton will be benched the rest of the year. Disgraceful. Disgr disgraceful. Give the ball to Stidham. At least give me something versus nothing but a sack of crap, which is Cam Newton. Do you think? I mean, do you think he won't go to Stidham? He better. I mean, what? what it's a good what, idea. No, but I mean, do you, you think? Do you? But do you think he Cam won't Newton go? Out on that football. Whether no, to I'm not asking himself? if you think it's a good idea. Do you think he's going to do it? No, I don't, because he's a stubborn old man right now. Yeah. I actually, truthfully, I'm in the camp where if the Patriots actually want to just say, okay, Bill, it's, it's been a wonderful ride. It's time for you to retire. Go ahead. It might be a better rebuild here for the team because I personally don't think the Patriots will be able to rebuild with Belichick in control. Bold statement. Could be wrong. Just my. I think it's. I think it's a. It's bold and it's reactionaryism, or just. As you know, I'm very reactionary. Yeah, you're. You're incendiary. You're. You're fiery. Cam Newton got a uh, charge game. out of me this year. Uh, he really did. No, no, you he's know, been. We saw. He's been why horrible. The, rest of the NFL passed on that fraud. He's a born <laughs> loser, and he always has been. He always will be. So for well, all won a, people, he won a. You know. He won a title in college. I mean, I think he's more or less in the NFL. In the NFL. Sure. I mean, he made just, Boy, he's made an that's MVP. On performance, from what I see, there's been mm -hmm. all this hype about him throughout his career. He won an MVP. Wow. Color me surprised. Hey, whatever, man. Well, I, I mean, uh, I think I think we're playing like dog poop. That's all. I think what Sorry. sealed the deal in Miami was the, was Gilmore going down. I think once that happened, it was like, well, the season's over. They're going to lose this game. Well, I mean, I think I think it was I over think before this game, don't you think, though? Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I also, but I think what, but I'm saying what sealed the deal. Yeah. Like, but it oh, definitely was over as soon as they lost to the, the Rams. Yeah. I mean, when uh, you can only score three points against a team. So we know our bright yeah. spots. We know we know uh, Nick Folk was one of the bright spots. I would say Matthew Slater. Wait, also. wait, wait. I'm sorry. Nick Folk was was the bright spot. Yes, definitely. He's one of them. You're not going to get. Listen, them. I'm with him 100 percent on this. I, I, oh, I know. I am too. I'm just surprised. From my, from my perspective. Yeah. Hundred percent. If we roll back the tapes to about again, you know, I'm a, a year ago. I don't know what I'm talking ago. about. So <laughs> yeah. it is what it is. No, but uh, to, I like the performance from him. But we got to give credit to great. Matthew Slater. I mean, he's. He, I think it's this is his. Uh, eighth Pro Bowl It's like it's ninth. I think it's the eighth or ninth. Eighth Pro or ninth Bowl or selection. something like that. So congratulations to him. Always love that guy. That guy is the one of the best yeah. special teams guys in the league. Uh, kudos to him. Yeah. Shout out to him. Great work. Great job. Uh, maybe Damian Harris would be another bright spot for me this year. 
um, but we saw him be injured. So, I mean, is he durable? Or is he another Sonny Michelle bag of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, damaged goods, just bag, bag of trash sometimes? Oh, I just, mean, you get, you, you glass just shatters every time they get on a football field. Like, I'm tired of it. We've, we've seen some good for the performances from Sonny Michelle too, the last few games. Yeah, maybe he got a kick in the ass a little bit, too. Earn it. Yeah, I mean, I think he, like you guys were saying, I think he was fighting for his job. And I think, like, Damian Harris is really knocking on that I door. Do. I like – I think the guy showed me a lot more explosion and trust this season in the limited roles kind of that we saw. I think he surprised Belichick, to, to tell you the truth. I don't think Belichick was counting on him whatsoever. The only downside to Michelle is that he's not a receiving running back. Correct. So that that's the you know that that's, that's a, the downside for him. Well, wasn't um, that something he was thought, supposedly? I, I, say, I thought he was forget, like in the, coming into the draft. I was going to say let's not forget about Rex Burkhead. But the problem with Rex Burkhead is again he's broken glass. It's yeah. Well, he's great when he's in there. Gordon like Hayward said. In the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> if only he got paid as much. Yeah. True. Isn't that the truth? No. Um, so the Patriots finish off with Buffalo and the Jets. I, I don't care. I, I don't care. I want to see Put something that – I want to see Stidham. Yeah, I think that would be great for Monday. Season. That's all I care about. Just let him, let him show – if he can't get the job done, at least he showed you something. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Then you got to ask, figure out what you're going to do start him the last two games. It doesn't even make a difference now. Correct. Um, on the Bucs side, the Bucs um, got the win against Atlanta. I actually thought they might actually lose the game. They had a big comeback right there. Brady had a great second half. I'm not surprised it's against Atlanta. Are you guys? I mean, the Bucs have been a second-half team all season long. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, know, I know I texted you on, on Sunday saying that, oh, yeah, they, you know, uh, they've the Falcons have held Brady to only 70 yards passing, but I for, I forgot that they're a second half team that day. I forgot they were four I'm quarters. I'm the type of person that records that, the games and watches. So did they. Tom Tom loves to text me when the games are going on and tell me what's yeah. going on. I tell him to go shut it basically. I don't say well, they, anything big though. I just say, <laughs> no, oh, I don't. love this guy. Well, that was actually a buddy of mine who watches MBE. He, he works at night now. And for the past, like, during the NBA playoffs this year, he was working at night. And I was always like, oh, yeah, that was great. It's like, dude, I'm watching it tomorrow morning. Don't, right. don't ruin it for me. I just don't have time to sit down at a 1 o'clock sometimes or even a 4 o'clock if I'm working down at the yeah. store or, or whatnot. I'll just watch it sometimes at night. I can have my dinner and just sit down and watch. Or maybe not watch. Maybe other people spoil it and say, oh, they suck today. Don't watch <laughs> it. And that's great because I don't have to waste my time. So, I mean, I love that too. So, well, I do love that twice uh, a Matt Ryan team or the Falcons have gone into a locker room <laughs> up big on Tom Brady, and every time he's – I'm I glad I like they learned Matt their Ryan. lesson is what I'm saying. I like Matt Ryan, but for some reason it oh, I don't mind him. Yeah. that unlucky kind of thing on him that you're never going to win. Maybe I should just say Falcons, yeah. Yeah, never going to win. But Matt Ryan is a free agent this upcoming year. I just – I don't know if that's somebody that you could uh, – you would take. If you're a – I'd rather Matt Ryan than Cam Newton. I know Tom's oh, shaking his head. I'll no, take a 38-year-old Matt Ryan versus that poo-poo. I, I mean, I, you know, it all depends on the pieces to the puzzle next season. I mean, I would, I would take Matt Ryan, but it all depends on, you know, if Belichick stays as the coach. If someone else comes in, who the you know who the receivers are? Yeah, and Matt Ryan come, it'd be interesting. I mean, I think back to Nick's comment about Belichick, like you know you can't rebuild with him, which he might not be wrong. But I mean, I would say, hell, I give him a leash of three years, and if they're not at a competitive level like they were well, at least the first couple of years that Brady was here like through defense or through at least through like a, uh, a talented, like a good balance attack. I mean, if I mean, we had a decent offense this year, if Sidham played, think about if Sidham was in there and he played like four or five games, like how would, what would that have done to the outcome of this season? What do you think? 
Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's, we haven't seen enough of him to be able to say, oh, yeah, well, you know, if you play four or five games, there's a chance that well, they could have I mean, split it. If it. Well, yeah, I mean, but if you, do you think he could have passed more than 89 yards or 110 yards? or Probably, I guess, but he would probably throw six interceptions at the same time, too. Yeah, sure. I guess we don't know. But I guess if I were to be a betting man, I'd bet it on Sidham. But, but sorry, Tom, I mean, you were saying. We, we could, we, we could um, rebuild with Belichick. You know, have him retire as coach and just have him be GM. No, that's I true. Mean, he's I already mean, he's already GM of the Patriots now, so why not yeah. just you know have him concentrate say, on okay, that. I'm not going to coach anymore. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's part of it too. Maybe a lot of it's passed by, and he just needs to do that, and not um, not necessarily be there um, as like a coach on the sideline. But I mean, right. I am willing, even for the sake. I mean, I don't run the team, but I mean, for the sake of the fact that for 20 years he and Tom Brady kept it competitive. And also, like, in Tom Brady's down you know, down years or when, you know, they did it on defense or special teams or, were like, a combined attack. I mean, we forget, like, the first couple – the first two – at least two out of the three first two Super Bowls, like – I mean, Tom Brady had a lot to do with it. But you also had a team that was built by Bill Belichick on defense and special teams that, you know, made it, made it easier for him to operate right. – and I think – you, do you think you had that this year? Do you think you had a balanced defense? Um, no. I, you know, I think we had a defense that couldn't be trusted in some games. Yeah. But do he we, did I hand mean, the keys yeah. – he did hand the keys over this season to his son, uh, Steve. But, again, you're missing key, point, key players on that defense. You're missing Hightower. You were missing Chung. You were missing – uh, Kyle Van Noy from last year that didn't get replaced. You were missing Ch- um, uh, what's his not Chandler not Chandler Jones. Um, Elandon Roberts. Elandon Roberts. Roberts. But there was another guy that uh, Jamie Collins. Jamie Collins wasn't Collins. there either. So you're missing some quality guys that you never replaced, and you can't do much when you don't have that many quality players and everything in there. I mean, you can have a next man up mentality, but not at the same level as some of those other guys. The positive I want to say, though, is that this upcoming offseason, there's a lot of space. Patriots are no longer in that cap jail that they've been in this year. So they'll be able to spend in some different categories in different ways. Is there anybody on your wish list that you are hoping for that can help uh, this Patriots team? Odell Beckham. I know you it's hate it. It's not him, a bad idea, do, though. Do we really? laugh at it, but it's not that I, I don't mind that, Phil. Yeah, yeah I don't that's, either. But I, that's what we—that's what we said about Cam Newton too before he signed with us. Oh, but I, I think it's different. I think like Beckham. I don't think Beckham is uh, past his prime. I think he's like, what is this? His fifth year, maybe. So I mean, like, I guess it depends. He's on, and what is it? It, it I, could be a good flyer to take on the guy because he might yeah. have something to prove. He does come with baggage. He's a diva. He's yeah, not but, like yeah. a Kyrie diva, but I think I can take this 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 guy. But I think if Cam was able to exist here pretty well, I mean, there's a difference between existing here within the system and performing well. Uh, I, I think Beckham could probably, you know, because he's got the talent. I mean, the thing with Cam, he doesn't seem to have that talent anymore. We're throwing a run. Like, it doesn't seem to all be there. I mean, for whatever reason, be it age or, you know, injury or – I think his name never should be mentioned on our show again. What do you think? Well, so Nam Kooten is yeah. what I call him. Just replace the end and the C. Poo poo. That's what I'll call him. Poo poo. Uh, no, but I think. Uh-huh. But who? Well, who do you? What do you guys think? I mean, I don't know. Like, are we talking offense, defense? It doesn't matter. Um, how about a decent quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> that I, I can actually, put a quarterback that, up on that, that list. That that it's actually good. knows how to you know move in the pocket and throw the ball. How about Brian Hoyer? What do you think of him? Get him out of here. I haven't thought of him in weeks. He'll end up in so. Tampa Bay holding Tom Brady's balls again. So, um, hey, you know what? If it, if honestly, like, good, he'll get a job there and they'll hang out. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I think you know tr- try to draft someone and get like get like a Stafford or someone. If you can get someone, I think we're I think we're looking at bridge years here. I think that's what we're realistically looking at. We live in Boston. There is no such thing as a bridge year. Oh, then you didn't live during the '90s Celtics because that was a bridge decade. <laughs> Still <laughs> was... a bridge right now because Trader Danny has done one championship since 2008. We all know that. 
hurrah that I've gone on that time. Or even earlier, because he's uh, been around. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. But I guess we forget, like, maybe if you're, I'm 38. I know you guys are a little younger. But, like, I remember when the Patriots. No. Oh, fair enough. Sorry 18. I brought it up. Son. Yeah, Nick's 16. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> a very successful 16-year-old. Uh, not me. Uh, but no, I the Pats used to be like the laughing stock of the league. They did. I will. I totally heard about it to say the truth. I never <laughs> really I lived like through it because I wasn't as passionate and cared about sports yeah. until I was, you know, heading towards that uh, double digit age. Yeah, actually, was I lucky like that too. Our, I like that our division is more competitive now than it was. I do too. It's no longer a joke. It's right. Yeah. I actually like the Bills' outlook. I like what I see from. Um, Josh Allen, I like that. I like what I see from that team. I still don't think that they scare the anything out of me, but it makes it more uh, competitive to say the least. Well, the Jets I mean, are still a mess. So looking looking at the, the you know looking at the AFC going into the playoffs, the only really other teams that stick out are the Ravens and the Chiefs. I mean, the Steelers lost to the Bengals last night. Yeah, the the Steelers look bad. Ben Roethlisberger looks like. Uh, Yukon Cornelius uh, from uh, Ru- Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. My goodness. Looks like a bearded, butted yo. Yeah, they've lost three in a That's row. What you were. No, I'm only kidding. Um, a little bit. I want to transition next. Uh, Tampa is uh, – they won against Atlanta. We talked about that. I still think Tampa will make the playoffs in some capacity. Um, we'll see how everything looks like with that as the next two, uh, basically we have two weeks to go for them. Uh, I want to see what Brady can do in a playoff. I want to see if he can get back to the big stage because the Super Bowl is in Tampa. So that's going to be in the back of his mind too, to play right at his home park. The Celtics, Phil, I know they uh, begin uh, tomorrow night. The NBA starts tonight, but I have to tell you, I know you're happy with Tristan Thompson and some of these other uh, guys coming in to help this team. I personally think that the Celtics do not look as strong as they were last year. That's just my I mean, I'm thought. not, I'm I'm not I, necessarily I'm, happy. Me. No, buy I'm not going to give it to you. Buy, buy just, me in, please. No, I'm not going to – I'm not selling you anything. I'm going to tell you uh, – I, I like Tristan Thompson. I think they need someone to help rebound. Okay. But I also know that – and I like Jeff Teague. I think Jeff Teague's a good player. But I also think what's going to happen is they're going to have to find their identity. And it's going to be, they're going to find out who's going to be able to score and help them score. Be it uh, one of my favorite, uh, Jalen Brown, yep. pictured right behind me, without the dunk on my head. But you have him and you have uh, Jason Tatum, who are going to be uh, the two headed beasts. But also, you need, you know, Kemba's going to be out until January, I believe. They're going to uh, hold him back. Uh, maybe even a little longer. Don't be surprised if he doesn't play until like February. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't play at all. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if uh, Who knows? he has knee surgery upcoming. I really wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think, honestly, like Harden's still on the market, but Harden is big and bloated. And I wanted to ask you your thoughts on what – would you make a deal for Harden? Because I'm a hard no. I say no, 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 no. But you could be – I, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to – like you'd be doing it just – I don't know how long – I actually don't know how long his – like how long you'd have him for. I don't know the contract length with Houston and them but I don't know I see how Tom I mean, feels about the NBA he does yeah he just he's out of it but um yeah no I, I don't know I don't really Harden is a good player on paper but I don't know if any of that would translate Sorry, at all. And I don't mean into it and he looks very oh, all, thick right now and not yeah he's bloated way. that's one thing he's, he's like a floater apparently he's fighting with some of the players on the team about uh, some of the rookies upcoming, and he's not being very good with the teammates and everything. Come, okay. I need to lose Cannon. I don't think he's Kyrie toxic, but I think yeah, that it would he could get there. It would it would greatly impact specifically Tatum and Brown putting Harden into this mix. I think the only way you'll get a good culture because I think we realized last year, up until the pandemic and everything that it was a likable team because of the culture that was created. Kemba was well-liked. Tatum, Tatum was right on point with them. Same with Brown. They all found each other. Uh, they all played together well together. I don't think putting somebody of that caliber into this lineup helps this team. 
in the immediate or in the future? I think, I mean, if some of their young guys come up and do well, great. I think they need another no real inside presence, like a, a offensive inside presence. I think they missed that opportunity with Miles but Turner. I totally feel that way. I think but, that they passed up on yeah. a lot of opportunities this uh, this free agency where they could have slid some other things together. I mean, look at the Hayward situation. I mean, Hayward goes and signs with uh, Charlotte, and yeah, you get all this kind of freed money to go and pursue something, but nothing was pursued. I mean, they they uh, the exemption actually helps them. I mean, we have the Tatum else. extension. That was the big thing of the offseason. No, that was, and actually, That's was something people were talking I, about. I, I will. Fully, fully be on board with that signing that was done. I mean, I think this is going to be a thing. I'll say it again. I think this is going to be – they're not going to be very good to begin – they might not be that good to begin, and they're going to have to find themselves and find what they do well. No, I, I, don't see, to, I don't think that they're that's, up that's, the top of the Eastern Conference right now, not with what I no, see. No, I don't think I so. I mean, maybe Tatum and Brown hit this whole other level and it surprised the heck out of us. Well, I think that's – I don't see it. I mean, I think it's something like – I don't know what you could add right now. Maybe another big – I mean, you could add, like, listen, Kawhi Leonard just said recently, hey, he's, he doesn't feel like picking up the option for the Clippers. And he's like, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be here. It just means it's better for me. Meaning he, you know, maybe wants a better deal from them or just wants to go somewhere else. You know, I say make a hard sell for him to get, you know, to bring in. And then you have, you know, if Kemba uh, retains or gets a little healthier – but he's not a spring chicken, so I don't necessarily expect I'm that. I'm concerned. That one, of the, one of the big things I'm concerned about. That, that's a big get, but who knows? I don't know. It all depends it what you're very, looking at. It, it, could be a, it could be a long season for them, but I hope Kemba stays healthy and all and everything will turn out to be okay. I think they'll be competitive, and I think that's more or less what you'll have. You might be looking at a four or fifth seed, maybe. Hey, maybe if they hit a ceiling, they get a third or a second. But I don't know if that will be the case because I think you have – Brooklyn is going to be Brooklyn. I mean, they're going to have Kevin Durant. Any team with Kevin Durant alone puts you in another category. If healthy. Yeah, Kyrie and him. Yeah, Kyrie and him. And then Milwaukee got better. Yep. And uh, I also think – well, Miami is going to be great. I think you're probably looking at the top three are going to be either uh, Milwaukee, Brooklyn, and Miami. I think those are going to be your top – Three yeah, teams I in the east, see that. I could see and then that. Philly got better too. Philly's pretty good, and they if they Everybody get their stuff even, together, that's the thing. That that that's what we doesn't didn't. I mean, well with me, yeah. I mean, we didn't get necessarily worse, but we didn't get per se better. I mean, I think Gordon Hayward, we offered him a good amount of money, but he just wanted to go somewhere else and you know shoot the lights out. Yep, I guess. But he's hurt again. I don't know if you heard about it. Yeah, he you. hurt his finger. So we'll see. Joke. Money well spent. Um, there's really nothing to report on the Bruins or hockey besides January uh, 13th, so we're going to keep it quiet on that front. The Red Sox are doing absolutely nothing right now, so again, very quiet on that front. So we're going to change it right over to um, the Christmas stuff. So one of the things I want to ask you is, out of all the four teams, if there's one particular present you would put under that Christmas tree for a certain team, what would it be? So let's go to Tom first. What is that one gift that you would give under the tree? for whatever organization it would be and explain um, it, uh, you know, you know uh, I, another another good season from the from the bruins upcoming this season like they how had they last doing? season what how do they do it that's a very very large gift that doesn't probably fit under a tree uh-huh i don't know I, you know Hopefully, Ras plays the way he does last year, and doesn't oh, you know leave leave the uh, leave the tunnel. I don't think so. Oh, you know, or the the top line, you know, just has a stellar year like they did last year. I'll, okay, that that'll that'll be good. Oh, well, Pasternak being healthy too it would be extremely important. Yeah, that would well, that would important. that would help. Uh, Phil, do you have a particular gift? Well, I guess I'll stay with the Celtics. Okay. I mean, I, I guess I. Uh, the gift of uh, team offensive basketball, spreading the ball around and maybe during the trade deadline, uh, picking up the slack and, and getting someone interesting. Kind of like what Toronto actually. did, right? With getting um, a couple of players and even Miami. Didn't Miami get a couple? Yeah, Miami uh, did a good job in getting, uh, what's his name? From Iguodala. Golden State. Iguodala, who wasn't with Golden State, I forget who he was with at the time. But yeah, they got Iguodala. 
for that was good not move. too, too Ended much. Ended up helping in game six, and they won from. Yeah, it um, did. From, for me, general, yeah. um, I'm going to go with uh, a baseball. I'm going to go with uh, – there's got to be some sort of replacement for Mookie Betts. There has to be. It's, it's critical for this team to move forward with another person that's like him. So the best particular option, you have two choices. You can go with George Springer, and that kisses Jackie Bradley the heck out of here. That'll take one stress off of my plate away. And you could also go um, – uh, what the heck is his name? There's a guy that was playing for the Braves. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Ozuna? Ozuna. Marcelo Ozuna. You could also go with him, too. You got to replace some sort of a thunder in that lineup with um, one of those two types. So that would be my gift. The last thing we're going to do on this show, we're going to actually play a game between Phil and Tom. It's going to be called Christmas Match. I have what? written down a phrase on this little post-it note, little thing that I have here. And I have a particular phrase or word, and you're going to fill in the blank with what I writ on this note that's right here. Whoever gets it first gets the point. Whoever wins uh, will get bragging rights and will get some other sort of prize from me. I haven't thought of what it's going to be yet. So uh, the first round, ready? Here is the blank. You have to fill in the blank with whatever I came up with or, or is the top answer. Christmas blank. Go to vacation. Tom first. Oh, sorry. Vacation? Christmas vacation is not it. Phil, to get that whopping one point <laughs> in this first round, what is the blank? Christmas blank. Season. Season. That is wrong. So we go back to Tom. Tom, it's still up for grabs for one point. Uh, Christmas Eve. That is wrong. We're going to go to Phil again. We're not going to go. We're going to do this for four hours. We'll get it. <laughs> um, Chris McKean, can we get a hint? Uh, the word begins with a G. Oh, I have no idea. Christmas... Anybody? Gift. No, give it to Tom. Gift. Christmas I'll give gift. it to Tom. Wow. I, okay, I am, round two. I am Denzo. Snow blank. Call it out. Snow today. No. Snowball. No. Snow miser. No. Oh, uh, snowstorm. No. No man. No man. Tom, you are right. two for two. Round three. White blank. Christmas. Wrong. That was a good one, though. Well, I mean, white. I'm Bing Crosby. I know you're a fan. I'm dreaming uh, of a white yeah. Christmas. Uh, up for you, Tom. White something. And it's not white man. <laughs> Sorry. What you got? Uh, yeah, uh, what? Uh, no, I'm... It's white. Begins with an owl. Begins with an owl. You said it was white blank? White, white blank. blank. It gives it an L. White. We're using it right now. <laughs> we need this to see. <laughs> I, I, okay, I kind of, I think I white know what it blend? is. You turn this thing on. White light? There you go, white lights. White lights? What's a white, white light? Lights. Like, oh, like, like Christmas lights? lights? Like Christmas lights. <laughs> All right. Okay, this one's a little... Very easier. problematic, my friend. Candy blank. Cane. Candy cane? Okay, you both get a point there because you both said it at the same time. Man, we did not say it at the same time. <laughs> no, that is clear. Phil, Phil said it that is right. clear. The ruling of the judges says it was a tie. Whatever. <laughs> Number five, a tree <laughs> blank. Tree <laughs> blank. This one's a little hard. Tree tidy? No. Tree bark? Not tree bark. Remember, they're all Christmassy kind of answers. Tree garnish? Mm. No. Tree tidings? No. Tree <laughs> ornament? Tree trimmings? No. Tree ornament? Tree rollings? Begins with an S. Tree star? Excuse me, I need to do this. For a bit. <laughs> I am the tree star. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh no, I have no idea. Tree stand. Tree stand. You both lose. Tree stand. Tree stand. 
I, I feel three, like a winner. Free stand kind of thing. That would have been my tenth guess. Uh, the next <laughs> yeah, one is. Uh, I feel bad for people watching gift. this. Blank gift. Secret gift. Christmas gift. Blank <laughs> gift. Christmas think, gift was Phil's. Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep want, rattling yeah, I off. To give Phil a chance, you know. Yeah, number thanks. seven. We're doing this. We have uh, one, two, three, four more. Christmas, uh, uh, not Christmas. A uh, Santa blank. Santa Claus. Santa Claus goes to Tom. <laughs> blank. So. Fire. Blank. Fire. Roasted. Expand upon that. Chestnuts roasted on open there fire. There you go. Phil's got that um, okay, one. Okay, okay. Right, sorry. Right. Red blank. A red nose? Expand upon that. Rudolph's, Rudolph's red, red nose? Reindeer. Uh, nose reindeer. I'm going to give that to Phil. And the last one. Ah. Blank knife. Blank silent. knight. Silent. Silent. It's not silent. What? Holy uh, Night. Holy Night. Uh, All I can think about is the horror movie Silent Night, Deadly Night. I think it was Phil and Tommy both tied. This is going to give you the game. Slay Blank. Slay Bells? Nope. No. Slay no. Ride. Slay Ride. Phil is the winner. Uh, ding, 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 ding. That's right, boy. I All right. That's going to do it here for our Christmas edition there of our Face the Facts program. We wish everybody a merry, merry. Have a what great a comeback, holiday. Though. What a comeback. And we will see you again. I didn't know I had it in me, Tom. It was a Christmas <laughs> miracle. We'll probably see you again right before the new year. So we'll just say merry uh, Christmas. Have a oh, great yeah. holiday. And we will see you after it's all complete. Happy New Bye. Year. Or, yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, guys. <laughs>